So I wanted to share some advice that I've been talking about with some people about managing their mortgage repayments through COVID, managing their money in, you know, in the next few months. We've had a lot of phone calls over the last week and a half. And when I was thinking about it, a lot of the themes that we've been talking about and a lot of people's financial situations, while they're a little bit different, um, a lot of the steps that they've got to go through in terms of resolving this has been similar. And I thought it might be useful to share this with everybody else in case you wanted to watch it and see. So the big thing with the whole COVID situation, the virus and um, the work situation is, is, is the uncertainty is really what I think is at the core of uh, what's creating a lot of problems for people. There's a lot of uncertainty about when they're going to start back to work, what's going to happen, what's going to change in the future. And that's understandable. And so this is to try and eliminate some of that and to try and give you a bit of a guide as to what to do in the future. So the first thing we want to do is we want to really get clarity and understanding about what your situation is at today. Okay, so the first step of doing that is is essentially tracking where all your money's at at the moment. So if you've got savings accounts, how much is in each account? Um, how many accounts have you got? And and I also would recommend maybe even consolidating those. So you've got one or two accounts going, how much have we got in those accounts and where is it at? The second thing that people often forget about is, is with your mortgage, a lot of people are in a situation where they've made advance repayments on their home loan or their mortgage, and you'll have what's called either redraw or available funds in your mortgage. Now, if that's the case, you can access that money usually at like you know a couple of minutes notice and you can transfer that money back either into an offset account or a transaction account so you've got access to it to either make home loan repayments or also to pay for things like you know uh, essentials etc so the first step is getting an excel spreadsheet and then writing all your accounts out and tracking how much money you've actually got available all right the second step then is then looking at the future and looking at, well, okay, with my job, has my work situation changed? What pays am I forecast to get? And when do they come in? So if you get paid weekly, end of those payments, you know, the end of those amounts weekly. If you get paid monthly, monthly, etc. Now, some people that we've been talking to have had the situation where um, their employer has stood them down or they're on reduced hours or they're on reduced pay. So in that situation, you might also now be qualifying for family tax benefit A and B, or you might be qualifying for the JobKeeper allowance or something like that. So in that same spreadsheet, break it up on a weekly or fortnightly basis and put in what you're expecting to get from Centrelink for those periods. If you've got investment properties as well, um, keep in contact with your property manager and then have a look at forecasting when is that rent going to get paid and how much is it, etc. So you can put that into your spreadsheet. The third step is expenses. Um, in, an, in a situation like this, they are mostly, they're the area that you can probably control the most because your income is going to be, you know, a little bit outside of your hands, etc. Um, so with your expenses, go through your bills, cut down on direct debits, have a look, review your gym memberships and, and where you're spending your money. You know, a lot of people we're seeing at the moment are spending a lot less on the non-essentials of stuff, um, but obviously you've still got to, you know, buy groceries and bread and all that kind of stuff. So that's fairly self-explanatory. And then have an allowance in your budget for those things. So if you've got, you know, for your loan repayments that are fixed, for car loan repayments, etc., put those in your um, spreadsheet as to when you make those payments. So you've got some idea of a rolling balance going forward. So what this does, this gives you a ground zero and it gives you a really like a, a non-emotional you know, situation going, well, this is what we're gonna to have to pay money wise going forward. This is our cash flow and this is what our expenses are gonna be. So it lets you, you do it. Um, a lot of people I'm hearing anecdotally are putting their head in the sand with this. A lot of people find it really stressful there it's, a, it's, a, it's a stressful situation on a number of levels, both money-wise, but health-wise, and you know, uncertainty in family and work and all that sort of stuff. And what they do is, the, you know, a lot of people do, do, go in denial on that. They stick their head in their hands and not deal with it. And guess what? It never is going to go away, and you're never going to get a situation where a problem is going to get better by avoiding it. So you're better off to at least start to break it down into little tasks that you can easily manage and, and chunk them off and do them. 
If you've got a problem with a bit of it and you want someone to have a look over it or you want to talk about it, obviously that's what we're here for, so let us know. Now, the next thing is, and it's a little bit different, this is more relating to your mortgage and repayments. So the first thing is, is the, this situation is created because a lot of banks, what they'll do is they'll set up your minimum repayments um, when you take out your loan and when it settles, and they'll start deducting those repayments. They might be weekly, fortnightly, monthly, etc. Now, what happens is a lot of banks is interest rates have reduced over the last six to 12 months, or the last few years for that matter. But as the interest rates reduced, the minimum repayment that you are required to make, it also reduces as well because now you're being charged less interest. But a lot of banks will still take out their old repayments unless you notify them. So if your repayment started here, and now they've reduced to here, 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 and here, they're still taking out repayments here. So that does two things. First thing is, is because you're making these extra repayments up here, you're getting ahead of your home loan. That's why I was saying, have a look at the redraw, have a look at the funds available, and see what's there if you need it. The second thing is, is though, is at the moment, because now the rates have fallen, and because the situation is probably tighter, you can contact the bank and reduce your minimum repayment, which might save you a few hundred dollars a week or a month, which helps with your budget, all right? So have a look at that, check it out, and maybe that might help you balance your budget over the next few months. The last thing is, is going on to a mortgage freeze, a mortgage holiday, a lot of stuff about it in the news, a lot of ads about it, a lot of banks have come out and said things about it, all that kind of stuff. So how it works varies between different banks, but typically how it works is that banks are offering either a three or a six month um, mortgage sort of holiday, as they would call it. That doesn't mean, when you say holiday, it doesn't mean they're not gonna charge you interest, it means that you're not gonna have to pay repayments. So what they do is they add the interest, they call it capitalize it, they add that to the loan, so your loan balance goes up over time. Now, if you use an example of, say, a $500,000 loan and you, rate, you use 4% interest rate over six months, there's about $10,000 of interest, and so your loan balance would go from 500 to 510 at the end of that. So at the end of the six month period, if you hadn't made any repayments, you now owe, you know, sort of $10,000 more on your loan. So a couple of things with that. So firstly, be aware of that. And then the second thing is, is my recommendation to a lot of clients is if they can try and hold out for as long as, you know, is reasonable before they take up that repayment holiday option. The reason why that is, is because if you started that, for example, say in April now, six months from now means it's gonna finish in October. If instead you can hold out a little bit longer until say the end of June, right to July, then six months from July takes you through to January. And with the whole employment situation and work and getting back into a, a normal sort of, you know, functioning society where everyone's working a certain amount, you know, they're 40 hours a week, etc. You know, the longer that you look into the future, the more likely that is. So, you know, although no one knows when this is gonna finish, you know, it's more likely that it's gonna be closer to being resolved, hopefully by Christmas, than it might be if you look at, you know, July, you know, June, May, etc. So we hope this helps. If you would like to talk about it one-on-one, -on -one, send us a message, we're here to help you, and answer any questions that you might have about your situation, because everyone's different. So I hope it's useful, and take care.